legend lives on. Titanic. Sunday on A&E. presents two macabre tales. When the proprietor of this quaint country inn unleashes her straw man, he's searching for more than just a brain in Scarecrow. But first, Ray Walston seeks revenge. You stole it! Like everything else in my life. Well, I'm going to get it all back. But finds instead only comic relief. And now, Tales of the Undead. Ferris fan, aren't you, kid? For years. It's my favorite, the best. Is that the real thing? Sure is. Very first edition of Ferris the Invincible. Tales of the Undead. A limited edition original signed by J. Starr himself. Oh, I've never seen one like that. I never... I don't know. There's something about it. I mean, just look at it. Yep. I'm real proud of that. Only one of its kind in the world. Nobody's ever seen one like that before. I'd love to have that. Yeah, I bet you would. One of the all-time greats. You know, Ferris is the first comic I ever started collecting. Yeah? How much is it? It's been conservatively appraised as priceless. I kill for a comic like that. You and every other comic book junkie in this town. I think it'll bring at least oh, 25000 at the auction. Hey, listen, kid. We're having a contest. Free comics for a year. Why not take a shot? Can I win that? Not on your life, but you might get lucky with one of the other titles. Just put down the comic you'd like to win for a year. Why? It's the only comic I want. Suit yourself. But I'm telling you, you ain't got no chance of getting that one. <laughs> Happy reading and uh, good luck in the contest. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? Yeah, I was getting worried. Not like you to miss your weekly visit. Oh, I got tied up at the store. Jack flew out to Singapore. I got to run the whole place by myself. You got my weekly fix back here? Hey, hey, what is it? That new partner of yours not carrying her weight? Oh, uh, no, I mean, she tries. I mean, what can you expect? She's, you know. Yeah, gave you a little bit of everything. Some old, some new, some borrowed. Uh, there's a new Peerless in there. Yeah, this one right here. This is great. You no, know, it really doesn't cost me anything to do it this way, you know. I just uh, read them and sell them at the store. It's a great setup. In fact, uh, I think I'm getting a free education out of this. I should have at least a PhD in comic art. 
Hey, you want to see something? Come here. Hey, excuse me a minute, kid. Come here, take a look at this, huh? There it is. What do you think? I don't believe it. March 1947. Volume 1, Issue 1. Tales of the Undead. The first introduction of Ferris the Invincible. You know that's my favorite. What do you think I'm showing it to you for? <laughs> I got it at an estate sale. They had no idea what they had. But that's not the most important thing. Take a look at who signed it. Jay Starr, is that for real? Yeah, sure it is. <sighs> How much you want for it? Hey, I'm selling it at auction. You know, the big one the Briggs is holding day after tomorrow. Stay right here. I'm going to go home and bust open my piggy bank. You got that much in your piggy bank? Man, I'm in the wrong business. See you later. Hey! What the hell do you think you're doing? Damn it! Oh, you leave that alone! Let go of me! Oh, I'm gonna have it! You just bought yourself a lot of trouble, punk. All right, you want it hard? I'm calling the cops. of his armor or something. It's metal. I don't know. I wish Jack were here. Mm -hmm. Held out. Ooh, some tough guy you are. You didn't see what hit me. Mm -mm. You don't believe me, do you? Come on, Ryan. A comic book character beat you up. I mean, maybe a guy in a suit. Look, I know how it sounds. But believe me, I also know how it felt. It wasn't a costume. It was Ferris. I have seen many strange things. But I'm not going to believe that a comic book came to life. Are you kidding? This is exactly how it happened in the story. In the original issue of Ferris, a kid gets a hold of this magic book, which transforms him into this robot. When he changes, the book is absorbed into his body. So you think that this is life imitating art? We've seen stranger things happen around here. <laughs> well, maybe in that case, it's in the manifest. Mickey, if there was a comic book in that manifest, one would think I would have noticed. Maybe, maybe not. Perhaps Uncle Lewis didn't put it under comic. You know, he could care less about that tribe. Excuse me. Here's something right here, a magazine. That could be it. Mm, who'd he sell it to? Oh. Doesn't really matter, does it, Charlie? Charlie said he bought it from an estate sale. So whoever bought it from Uncle Lewis is dead. Besides, I saw the guy who stole it from the store. Well, perhaps it would help if we found out who Uncle Lewis bought it from. Here, a Jacob Star Retsky. Jacob? That's him. That's who? J Star. J J Star changed his name from Jacob Staretsky when he created Ferris. Ferris the Invincible is pretty much. One of the most popular comics ever written, ever since it came out in 1947. It uh, built Peerless Comics single-handedly. So do you think this Jacob Storetsky is part of that? <sighs> J-Star? Well, that chance. It's a pretty sad story, really. See, he created Ferris, then he wrote it for a few years, and then he completely disappeared. 
He's supposed to have died in poverty, a broken man, after everyone else made millions after... I don't know. This date's pretty recent. There's an address here, even. Nikki, why don't you go over to Charlie, see what you can find out, talk to the cops and whoever. Uh, I'm going to go check out and see if this is J-Star. The J-Star. for the 40th anniversary. I'm not a reporter. I'm a friend, a, a fan of Mr. Starr. Well, Mr. Starr doesn't need to see you. Well, look, I just want... Who's this for? Who's that? Ah, uh, no one. Just another salesman. Uh, I'm a friend, sir. Uh, uh, well, a fan. I, I, I've, I've admired your work ever since the day you were Jacob Staritsky. He must be a fan. Let him in, Mrs. Spohr. Mrs. Forbes, she's harmless. Been taking care of me for years. It's hard to find somebody to stay with a worn out old man, a has been like me. Oh, I'm starred, isn't that true? Yes, it is. Don't try to fool an old man, boy. I can't believe I'm sitting here with Jay Starr. It's a name hardly revered in many places. You don't know what your work meant to me. You're the reason I started drawing. Could I get your autograph? <laughs> well, I'd be I'd be happy to if if the arthritis doesn't get in the way. You didn't come all the way out here just to get an autograph. This is the Comic Artist Award for Excellence. For 1947. That was for the first issue of Tales of the Undead. The first appearance of Ferris the Invincible. That was supposed to be my passport to fame and riches. Ferris was going to be... Mr. Starr, do you know anyone so obsessed with Ferris that he'd kill over it? Kill? Well, in the old days, maybe an editor or two. Yeah, up until Peerless Comics. They cheated him out of Ferris. Made millions on him, left him right out in the cold. If I had the power... Mrs. Forbes, go make some tea. She's right, though. They stole, connived, wriggled their way to the top. The worms always know where the bodies are buried. You remember that, boy? They got everything? except a few old issues which I had to sell and some original art that was never published. Censored scenes worth quite a lot to some people. I keep them in the basement. Insurance against a cold day. <laughs> I can't even get down there anymore. Just as well pains me to look at him. Must have been some pretty wild scenes to get cut from Ferris. Wild? Ferris. Ferris was nothing 
Nothing compared to some of the things I've seen. Frogs falling from the skies. People bursting into flames. It's a world of cruel miracles. Nothing surprises me. Could you stand another surprise? I'm an old man with a bad heart. But try me. Ferris, he's come to life. What are you saying, boy? I know this is going to seem impossible, but one of the original issues got cursed, and someone's been using it to turn themselves into Ferris. They even killed a guy named Charlie Evans downtown last night. I know Charlie Evans. Owns a comic book store. One of the best collections in the city. I've been in there several times. He's dead? I'm afraid so. And Ferris killed him? Yeah. I saw it. I know this sounds crazy. Crazy? <laughs> know what you mean, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I startle you? I'm so sorry. We're not open for business. Oh, yes, of course. I heard terrible news. Uh, do you mind if I sit for a moment? Well, I was... If you have to. Can I get you anything? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, I'll be all right. You go on about your business. Mario, you want publicity for Ferris? I can give you something you won't believe. No, no, nothing like that. I can give you Ferris himself, the real thing. Hello? Carmine DiMatteo. He and I go way back. Shouldn't leave your door open, boy. No telling who might walk in. Jay Starr's the name. J. Star. Yeah? Well, anyone can say that. You got proof? Will a prescription do? Oh, my God. Please, um, have a chair. <laughs> I can't believe you're here. I'm, uh, I'm your greatest fan. I seem to have quite a few these days. <laughs> I've made Ferris my life. Me too. 
That's why I'm here. You have something I want, something I need. As a matter of fact, it was mine to begin with. It was stolen from me. It's mine. I want that comic book. No! No. Please, Mr. Star, don't make me do something I don't want to do. Don't threaten me, boy. I want that comic. It's not yours! You don't know what I went through for this. Don't worry. I'm not going to end up like Charlie. Yes, 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 boy. I know all about it. And I have the worst habit of talking. Oh, I'm sorry you said that, Mr. Starr. I'm really sorry. Friday's curse will continue in a moment here on A and E. Why settle for half a workout on an ordinary treadmill when you can get a superior total body workout? Introducing the incredible new WalkFit from Nordic Track. Unlike ordinary treadmills, WalkFit's unique design lets you exercise your upper body and lower body at the same time. You get a fast, effective total body workout that burns up to 1,000 calories per hour. Whether your goal is to lose weight, tone muscles, or relieve stress. You can do it all with the WalkFit Total Body Treadmill from Nordic Track. Clinical tests show you can burn up to 79% more calories than with ordinary treadmills, up to 1,000 calories per hour. The unique upper body motion and lower body resistance actually results in a 53% greater cardiovascular workout than with ordinary treadmill. And WalkFit has no motor. It's safe and easy to use. Unlike motorized treadmills, you control the pace. There's no herky-jerky starts and stops. The WalkFit has separate resistance settings for arms and legs, so you can design a workout that's right for you. With its quality oak construction and sturdy 14-gauge steel poles, WalkFit is really built to last, and you get a 30-day in-home trial and two-year limited warranty. It's easy to enjoy Nordic Track's WalkFit in your own home. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. Calling this number right now could be the best thing you'll ever do for yourself. Nordic Track is America's leading fitness company, and we have a fitness solution that's right for you. So call now for a free video and brochure. You know regular total body exercise combined with a sensible diet helps you burn more calories so you can lose weight safely and keep it off. Why wait a minute longer? Call our toll-free number now and receive a free information pack video and full color brochure showing how you can get started on an exercise program you'll really enjoy and stick with. Don't settle for half a workout when you can get the superior total body workout you've always wanted with WalkFit from America's number one fitness company, Nordic Track. Call today. After all, it's from Nordic Track. Life in Virginia Beach is free and easy. Getting our vacation guide is much the same. Now return to Friday's Curse, Tales of the Undead. It's nothing like the humiliation of being laughed at by your idol. What did you think was going to happen? He was going to thank you? Of all people, I thought Jay Starr would at least believe in the possibility of the supernatural. Why? Because he used to draw them. Now, how does that qualify him for believing in a comic character coming to life? That doesn't mean it didn't happen. I was there, remember? I saw it. Ryan, I really don't get this. I mean, the artwork is poor, the stories are silly, and even if there is some semblance of logic in this Ferris, I mean, 
What's so special about it? Well, when you're a kid, the whole world doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, you're either too little or you're too young. You're not treated as a human. Everybody can kick you around any way they want to. But then you pick up a comic book, and they got these heroes in there that nobody can kick around. They just can do anything, you know? So you buy a comic, you read it, and you're the hero. Uh, uh, now, maybe I missed something. Let me try again. Solid steel armor? Invulnerable. Superhuman strength. My gosh, when we meet up with this character, he's going to be one tough customer. I think I found him. Are you sure this was necessary? This guy just stole the comic. He might have used it to turn into Ferris. And someone killed Ferris the Invincible. Nothing. Dead end. Does the name DiMario mean anything to you? DiMario, Carmine DiMario, publisher of Tales of the Undead. Very big guy. Well, his name was written on the snowpad. Fast food, long hours. Some glamour job, huh? Now, I don't know what the kid wanted. He didn't go into specifics. As for nutty Ferris fans, our readership is 1.3 million a month. Where are you going to start? Well, Chase Star mentioned... Start. You about... talked to him. And I suppose he told you how my father cheated him out of everything but his shirt with Ferris, huh? There are two sides to every story. Now, Star sold his interest in Ferris to my father in 1948 for a very handsome sum. A lot of money, even for today. Then he lost it in a land swindle. Typical of him. <laughs> More of his classic business sense. You know what he tried to do 30 years ago? Kill Ferris off. I thought Ferris couldn't be killed. Oh, he came up with something. Who remembers? Had Ferris the Invincible killed? Did the whole issue? Of course, we didn't publish it. The original pages, do you still have some? No, I don't know where they are. I couldn't care less. We own the rights. And just so long as we don't publish, and I can assure you, we never will. Ferris is safe and alive in the hearts of millions of fans. What about the auction? Oh, yeah, sure. That'd be a likely place for them if they're going to turn up anywhere. At least somebody will make a buck off them. Well, thank you very much. Sure. Jay? You look like a well-groomed show dog. Life been good. Yourself? Can't complain. I meant to drop you a line when Mary... Ah, uh... uh, that's water over the dam. I'm here to stake a claim, Carmine. A claim to what's... That... That picture. Where did you get it? Oh, that? Well, I bought it a couple of... The hell of you bought it? 
It's mine. It's from my basement, and I never sold it. Now, PJ, uh, relax yourself. You want it? It's yours. You stole it! Like everything else in my life. Well, I'm going to get it all back. Relax. Don't get excited. Remember your health. I've learned a new trick, Carmine. One you can't steal. Ryan, get your head out of the comic books. This is the real world. Now all we gotta do is get back that comic book. Okay, okay, let's call it in. Get the shooting team out. Come on, let's go before the police find us. But he's invincible. He can't be killed. He's super strong. Bulletproof. Oh, you can't forget that. And we know he kills people. Will you stop this? It's not going to do any good. It helps me concentrate. We've got to find him. Him or that damn comic. Great, so we find him, then what? He took about 20 rounds back there. Slowed him down for what, 30 seconds? Yeah, well, it's better than sitting around here like this. I mean, uh... There's got to be something we can do. There is. I just haven't thought of it yet. Give me a couple of minutes. You haven't got a couple of minutes. We haven't got any time at all. I mean, this thing is out there killing people. You're the expert. What can we do? I was thinking about what Carmine DiMatteo said at his office. You mean the thing about the comic where Ferris gets killed? Mm. Yeah, but that's completely lost. No one knows where it is. What are we going to do, knock on doors? No, there's an easier way. <sighs> How? When you need water, go to the well. What the hell does that mean? Go to the source. Star? Friday's Curse will continue in a moment here on A&E. Do you?
you want to make more money? Then call this free number to find out how easy it is to train at home for a better career. At ICS, you can prepare for an exciting career at home in your spare time. Choose from any one of these courses. High school, TV, VCR, repair, computer programming, electrician, animal care specialist, business management, or accounting. Call 1-800-791-4100 right now for free information on the course of your choice. There's absolutely no obligation. So call now, 1-800-791-4100. Time is running out for these children. Their cancers won't wait for a cure. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, the race to find a cure depends on you. I come to St. Jude because I have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I have leukemia. Time may be running out, but it's not too late. And any contribution you can make, no matter how small, will help kill the cancer that's killing these children. Sometimes I scream because it hurts. Hurts. Your gift will provide research, treatment, and hope. At St. Jude, no family pays for their child's treatment. That's why whatever help you can give is so important. Please call now with your tax-deductible gift. If you like, you can even charge your gift. If I had one wish, it would be that there was a cure for cancer. Please call and help us right now. There isn't a second to lose. Screening Room will return after these messages. A&E's monthly magazine opens your eyes to the best in original biographies, mysteries, and specials. From complete highlights, in-depth reviews, and an array of collectibles, to fascinating articles, up-close interviews, even the challenge of a crossword. A&E Monthly is your connection to what's happening today. To order your 12 issues of the A&E Monthly for only $18 a year, 23 Canadian dollars, call 1-800-238-2800. This month, we feature Peter Falk, the man beneath the raincoat. And with your paid subscription, receive a free CD of Strauss Waltzes, featuring the Blue Danube and the artist's life. Call 1-800-238-2800 for an engaging look at television's best. We now return to Friday's Curse, Tales of the Undead. What do you want? Sorry to bother you again, but I have to talk to Mr. Starr. It's late, and he's getting ready for please, bed. Please, please, it's very important. It will only take a little bit of his time. I'm afraid that's out of the question. Who is it? It's that young man who was here earlier. Tell him to go away. I can't see him now. I saw Ferris again! Let him in. But just for a moment. Do you think we can talk in private? That'll be all for now, Nancy. As you wish. Now, what is all this nonsense about Ferris? I don't, I don't know how to tell you this, but Ferris... There is no Ferris. Ferris was a figment of my imagination. Do you understand? I made it all up. I saw him tonight, a couple of hours ago. Probably some lunatic in a costume. No, it's not. It's really Ferris. I mean, if you could see the power. It, it's not human, and it's not a costume. Well, I'm sure there must be some logical explanation to all of this. Well, then explain to me how he gets shot down by a bunch of cops and then gets up and walks away. You saw him walk away? Well, I was in the alleyway outside of Peerless Comics. I saw him come out right after he killed Carmine Donatio. Kill? You saw him kill someone? So you told the police? What am I going to tell the police? I saw Ferris. I... You've got to help me. No one else can. So what do you want from me? Well, I was told that you wrote an issue of Tales of the Undead where you killed off Ferris. That was a long time ago. You must have some notes or, or sketches or something about how to kill him, how we can bring down Ferris. If there ever was anything like that, I threw it away a long time ago. Well, 
Maybe you can remember. I mean, you created this. I don't. I don't. I told you, I don't remember. That was a long time ago. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's getting late. And I'm extremely tired. And your prattle about Ferris is not only boring, it's damned irritating. That's a waste of time. He says he forgot. Look, maybe he really doesn't want anybody to know the secret. Or maybe he has forgotten. At any rate, we can still check the auction gallery. It might turn up. You couldn't leave well enough alone, could you? You? You stupid old fool. What did you do with it? I sold it. What the hell do you think I did with it? You sold the last issue of Tales of the Undead, the secret issue? Why not? You... Who did you sell it to? What difference does it make? Did you get a good price for it? Yeah, I must admit I did. Your work brings in a chunk of cash. It's worth a fortune just sitting over there gathering dust. You've ruined everything. You don't think I cared for you and stuck around here all these years because I loved you. You didn't really think that, did you? No. No, no, I, I guess not. Where are you going? To pack. You don't have to go if you don't want to. What? Do you mean that? Well, who else am I going to find to take care of a crotchety old fool like me? I would like to know who you sold it to, though. Well? It was a dealer named Ted Haley said he bought it for the auction. Well, I hope he gets a good price for it. I, I, I'm sorry. I never kept any of it for myself, you know? Be sure to put the latest works over there. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. The auction isn't until tomorrow. Oh. Oh. Is uh, this everything? No, no. There's still a few uh, items outstanding. We're looking for one in particular. So which one's that? Mr. Starr's unpublished folio, the one where he kills off Ferris. Oh, yes. You're a fan. Yeah. Ah, uh, that hasn't come in yet. Uh, it should be here uh, any minute. But it is on the list. Yes, indeed it is. And I expected to raise the highest price of any item here. It's just that the owner hasn't brought it in yet. I expect he's waiting to the last minute to have it delivered. Do you know who the owner is? I'm afraid that information is confidential. No, no, no. Hang it over there.
We appeal to his better nature. Offer money. You got it. Nice to know there's some things in life you can still count on. Ryan, that car over there, something's... Show somebody's making out. Leave him alone. I don't think so. Something doesn't seem right. Ted Haley. See if it's here. Check out the comics. I don't see any sign of Tales of the Undead. Some of it's covered with blood, but... What's wrong? It's... stars. Pills for his heart. Find out how to destroy Ferris. Who is it? Mr. Starr, it's Mickey Foster. I'm a friend of Ryan's. He was here earlier. Go away, I'm busy. Please, Mr. Starr. I've got something to show you. What do you want? Now what do you want? Oh, leave it alone. It's mine. Don't you touch it. It was my creation. And they stole it from me? And what did I get for it? Nothing. I'm telling you, you'll get back there. You don't. No, no. Don't touch that. Don't touch it. You break into my house. You steal my revenge. They owe me. They stole Ferris from me.
Ryan, uh, have you got number 17? In there. I just want to see what happens. There's a comic arts festival at the art gallery in next month. I've had enough of comics for a while, okay? Fine, if that's the way you want it. You want to leave me alone? Look, if it makes any difference, I'm sorry about what happened. Yeah. Mickey. I saw it in a comic book. I cut it out. You know, when I was a kid, he was all I ever really wanted to be. I didn't want to be a hero. I just wanted to be an artist. I used to copy his drawings. Did I ever show you any of my drawings? What, is this a line? Want to come upstairs and see my etching? <laughs> no, I'm much more sophisticated than that. <laughs> oh, right. No, really, besides, I, I, I never understood what was so great about etchings. Now, number one, Spider-Man. That's something. Friday's Curse will continue in a moment, here on A&E. Call for the newest guide to understanding money and investing. It's free when you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Do you know what are the best investments in a volatile market? How can you minimize the risk of buying stocks abroad? Get the answers. Get the guide when you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Call now for your free Wall Street Journal guide to understanding money and investing. It focuses on the risks and the rewards of investments so you can make informed choices. Make your money work harder than ever. Call now to get your guide free when you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal, where you'll find information you need to get ahead and stay there. News, insight, and analysis that can affect decisions you make, from world events to issues that mean the world to you. The Wall Street Journal hits home every business day. Get 10 weeks of the journal for just $36, and the guide to understanding money and investing free with your paid subscription. Call toll-free 800-542-9300. That's 800-542-9300. It took years of practice, but I made it. When I was 24, I joined the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. But in 1988, it looked like all I worked for might end. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Then I found a cancer treatment program I could believe in. It treated the whole person, not just the cancer, and gave me the stamina to keep playing. We can help. Call 1-800-273-1255. I found cancer treatment centers, and I've treasured every concert since. Remember how you felt when you heard your favorite song? This is the music, and these are the musicians that made you feel that way. A&E In Concert, where the music is. I'm Phil Collins. Welcome to In Concert on A&E. A&E In Concert, tonight only on A&E. Screening Room will return after these messages. There is only one total body fitness machine that gives you a complete aerobic workout while stretching and toning all large muscles at the same time. This is it. There is only one fitness machine that is whisper quiet and totally non-impact. This is it. There is only one fitness machine recommended by fitness expert Covert Bailey to burn fat, lose weight, and keep it off. This is it. If you're looking for the best time to take action, get off the diet merry-go-round, lose weight, and keep it off. This is it. Call now for your free video and brochure. We now return to Friday's Curse, Tales of the Undead. Fuel, water, and feed. 
We're gonna pay off every last one of them, son, but it'll take most everything we got. It was that last crop, huh, Dad? Yeah, it was a big disappointment. Hey, but just ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen? They can't break us. They can't split us up. Hey, remember, we got Mom up in heaven looking out for us. Another blanket? Okay. Good night, Tiger. I can't believe you brought the mail with you. I'm not the one who sent out those... Mailers. Whatever. Sending us all over the country looking for a scarecrow. Did you bring the uh, letter? I didn't write down the address. Yeah, it's right here. Charles Cobain, Riverdale. You know, this letter looks a little bit strange. Let's it's... not go inventing problems, okay? It's probably somebody who doesn't like rural art. It came because we sent out the mailers, so the mailers are a good idea, right? Yeah, okay, well, the next time you answer them. Here's a note from Jack, a postcard. Mm. Managed to pull himself away from the beach is long enough to write, huh? <laughs> oh, it's gonna take another week or two before he finds the Icarus feather. Well, we didn't miss it by much. It's about six miles down that road back there. What do you got there? Oh, well, seeing as we're in the country, I thought I'd pack a picnic lunch. Catch. Where'd you get this? In the door by the fridge. Yeah? Well, it was there for a reason. Ryan, I didn't mean anything by it. Okay. It's nothing. I never heard of either one of you. I never got no mailer. As for who wrote this note offhand, I'd say somebody's been pulling your leg. But you did buy that scarecrow from our uncle, didn't you? Oh, yes. It burned up in a crop fire three years ago. And unless you'd care to strain the North 40 for ashes, we got nothing more to discuss. Thank you. Oh, by the way, um, before we go, you wouldn't mind terribly if I used your... Back there. Thanks. I'll be right back, dear. Keep talking. 
So, looks like you got a pretty thriving farm here. What kind of crops you grow? I didn't see any. Well, uh, the harvest has mostly just come in. our boy. That's our business. I didn't ask you to come, but I'm asking you to leave. So what do you think? They were lying through their teeth. Burnt in a crop fire. We know the antiques can't be destroyed. We found that out the hard way. <laughs> well, what now? Well, we're here scouting antiques. Let's scout. I'm gonna get in on this side. What's around the corner? What's that? What? Over there on the hill. What is it? It's a crossbeam for a scarecrow. Where's the scarecrow? Who the hell are you? What do you think you're doing? We might ask the same of you. How do you do? I'm Mickey Foster. This is Ryan Dalion. We're antique dealers. We were seeing the co-beans. I'm afraid our curiosity got the better of us. You want to watch it? I can bite you. From the city, huh? I'm Marge Longacre. I live over there a piece. I was just taking some of my special tea over to call their boy, Nick. He looked like he could use some calming. Oh, you met him? I'm surprised Charlie and Tootie let you. He's, uh, they're always very careful to keep him protected. Since, well, it's not a mine. Staying long, are you? Oh, for a couple of days. We were planning on hunting down some things. You know any place we can stay? Well, now you've just asked the $64 question. I happen to be owner of the Long Acre Inn and entire staff. And it's not only the nicest place in town, but the only place. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a monopoly. <laughs> yes. Well, you just amble on over there. It's not hard to find. It's right in the center of town. I understand we've had some visitors. I got fresh linen for you anyway. I could have done a whole lot better if I'd had a little notice. Oh, that's fine. Is that you? Me and my husband. He was a farmer. And he buried him. I'll go freshen your rooms. Nice lady. You know, Ryan, when we were at the farm and Mr. Cobean was putting his son back in his room, his wife tried to tell me something. Yeah, I noticed that. Well, maybe she'll get back to us. Kissed her 
that she lay there in the coffin. And her lips were cold. Let me explain. Now, just a minute. I'll explain. Wherever there is a superstition, Friday's curse will continue in a moment here on A&E. Remember your mom saying, eat all your vegetables? Alicia searches through garbage for food. Remember your dad calling out, hurry up, time for school. Martin has no money for books or school. And remember your mother saying, it's cold outside, put on a coat. No one's ever offered Eduardo a coat. When you were a child, there were people who cared for you. For these children, there's no one. Yet in every face, Christian children's fund workers see a little hope. But hope by itself doesn't fix things. Help does. Your help. As a sponsor for CCF, your $21 a month provides clean water, good food, clothing, medical care, and an education for one child like Alicia or Eduardo. Please, call Christian Children's Fund now the world's oldest and most highly respected child sponsorship organization. Let one child know that there's more than just hope. There's you, and you care. The cities of the world are filled with homeless children. They're homeless because of wars, civil strife, natural disasters. They're homeless through no fault of their own. They're just children. Christian Children's Fund helps children in 44 countries around the world. We've seen enough to become discouraged by the sheer enormity of the problem, but we're not. We're actually making headway because of people like you. For every desperately needy child, there's someone like you who can save them. It costs $21 a month, 70 cents a day to give one child good food, clean water, clothing, medical care, and most important, an education. I'm not going to save the world, neither are you, but you can save one child. And if we all do that, we'll eliminate hunger and disease from the reasons innocent children die. Call Christian Children's Fund now. Save one child. It could be the finest thing you'll ever do. Do you want to make more money? Then call this free number to find out how easy it is to train at home for a better career. At ICS, you can prepare for an exciting career at home in your spare time. Choose from any one of these courses. High school, TV, VCR, repair, computer programming, electrician, animal care specialist, business management, or accounting.
Call 1-800-445-3883 right now for free information on the course of your choice. There is absolutely no obligation, so call now, 1-800-445-3883. On the next episode of Sherlock Holmes Mysteries... I am at this moment the most unfortunate man in London. A young man is framed for a horrifying arson and a most brutal murder. He didn't even know the man, Mr. Holmes. But you did, Mrs. McFarlane. Then, on Lovejoy Mysteries, can ancient curses really be haunting Lovejoy? It brings bad luck to whoever has it. Is it the statue or just coincidence? Both on the A&E Monday Night Mysteries. Monday on A&E. We now return to Friday's Curse, Tales of the Undead. Mickey, what did you see? Where's her head? Where's her head? It's gone. But it's all a scarecrow. What's all the hullabaloo? Stay back. There's been an accident. But by the time you got that door open, there was no one inside. Except the body. It was dark. I didn't see anyone. You got anything, Dad? Not a thing. I was upstairs. Sheriff? Yeah, excuse me. So much for the official story. Now tell me what you saw. It was the scarecrow come to life. That leather mask. And I had a picture of her pinned to its front. It had a huge blade with a handle. What do you call them? A, a scythe. It must have just cut her head off. Well, that's a tall tale. That'll surely hit the papers. Don't try to impress your friend with nonsense like that. Stories have a way of spreading in a small town. And I wouldn't like that one bit. You read me? Good. Stains off the porch. Oh, a little lemon juice does the trick. Yeah. You're guessing around? Nope. Oh, don't worry. The things are still around. Well, you know where they went. I gotta ask them a few questions. About last night? Yeah. That girl had the strangest story about some scarecrow coming after Judy with a side. Sounds pretty crazy to me. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? And I got the coroner's report back. It said that the murder weapon was a long, sharp blade. I found this in Tootie's hands. Well, here she is. Hmm. I definitely want that. Is $50 okay? Oh, okay. I wouldn't happen to know of anyone else who might like to sell things. Oh, sure. Past few years, it's been mighty hard, and the farmers, uh, they'd be happy to have a few extra dollars. Hmm, really? Well, we went out to see the Cobeans, and they didn't seem too interested. Oh, that doesn't surprise me. Way their crops have been sprouting up the past few years. <laughs> They're hardly in need of any petty cash. Been doing pretty well, huh? Yeah, they bought up all the farms around them. <laughs> Used to be, Charlie couldn't raise fleas on a dog. <laughs> then, all of a sudden, his buck changed. Overnight, like rainstorms, we used to wash everyone else out, never even touched him. <laughs> never saw such luck. Until last night. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. There's been a lot of violence around here, a lot of murders. Murders? Oh. How about um, disappearances? People just suddenly missing? Oh, well, for the way the farmers be failing, well, 
Some folks just sort of skip out ahead of the bill collector. <laughs> Anybody skip out that uh, surprised you? Most recent was uh, Dave Mino, uh, about a week or so ago. A nice guy. He, he was the kind of guy that he, he'd walk a mile to pay you back a penny. And uh, him and those boys, they just vanished. Looks like they're heading for Dave's old place, boy. You really like that little redhead, don't you, boy? I can see it. But she's a wild one. Wild little filly. I've got a breaker for her. You can ride her. Break her good. to call this home. God's name's going on, Ryan. Charlie lies about having a scarecrow. Scarecrow's killing people. Charlie's crops thrive. Seems pretty clear to me. Yeah, well, there's one missing factor. Where is it? Yeah.
little bit, huh, Tiger? will continue in a moment here on A&E. Well, I'm here to tell you that a diagnosis of cancer does not mean a death sentence. It is just another challenge that must be faced. And there are places that you can go to get the help that you need. I found the treatment here special because um, it was a team approach between the physicians, the nurses, and um, other health caregivers. Um, I found that nutrition was very important. The uh, support system was in place. There was group therapy going on. Find out how we can help you. Call us now. Cancer Treatment Centers of America, 1-800-567-1255. I feel like this would be the best place for anyone to come to be treated for cancer. Hi everyone, Steve Allen here to tell you about an important breakthrough that lets you hear a whisper up to 70 feet away. It's the Whisper XL, an amazing electronic earpiece that lets you hear a pin drop from across the room. The same way binoculars magnify your vision, this tiny device magnifies your hearing. Just slip on the whisper, turn up the volume, and you're ready for super hearing like never before. Don't turn up the TV, turn on the whisper, the Whisper XL. Similar devices sell in catalogs for $200 and more. But if you call now, the Whisper XL can be yours for just $29.95. Think of it, just $29.95 for super powerful hearing. Give us a call and turn up the volume. To order your Whisper XL, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-447-6100. Or send check or money order for $29.95 plus $5.50 shipping and handling to 4000 American Way, Roanoke, Virginia. For faster service, call 1-800-447-6100. Everyone's talking about the new New Yorker, edited by Tina Brown. Filled with brilliant color, innovative features, and star-studded contributors, it means that the best magazine in the world, probably the best magazine that ever was, hasn't just changed, it's gotten even better. Get 50 issues of The New New Yorker for just $18. Save $107 off the cover price. And get this cartoon collection free with your paid subscription. Call 1-800-847-7200 now. It was the wrong place. And the wrong time. How did you know? For a friendly gathering. A very nasty thought has come to me. And when friends turn up dead. My brother didn't murder him. And everyone is dying for the truth. All the ones I've spoken to are terrified. No one is living to tell it. I saw him. I was intended to be a witness. Inspector Morse. Tuesday on the A&D Mystery Movie. We now return to Friday's Curse, Scarecrow. Stay there, don't move. Oh. It's okay, it's okay, can't hurt you. You all right? Jordy Mino, Dave's son. Yeah, I yeah. found him inside. Looks like he's been there for a while. Where's your pappy, boy? Uh, offhand, I'd say, uh... Yeah. Well, it's kind of a good thing I'm impatient. I got tired of waiting to come looking for you. Looks like there's a little truth to that scarecrow story. Knowed him since he was born. At least it puts an end to all this. Well... I'm gonna have to talk to Charlie. 
Man lost his whole family in one night. I'm gonna have to talk to you too. Look, uh, officer, I, I, don't, I don't mind if he stays with me as long as we're in town for a while. We just got an aunt down south somewhere. Might take him a while to track her down. How's the little soldier? Got him all cleaned up. Thanks for the towels and stuff. Oh, it's nothing. Looks like a little Christian soldier again, huh? Still hasn't said a word? No. Well, I wouldn't wonder after what he's been through. If he pipes up, you give a holler. I'll know just what to do. It's been great. Thanks. So I say to Mickey, Mickey, how would you like to look like that guy? And he gets the oddest expression on his face. And I realize that both our windows were down and he heard every word. I handled it pretty well, though. I slid down out of my seat, let Mickey deal with it until the light changed. You think that's pretty funny, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pouring my heart out to you here. Try to get some sleep, huh, guy? as though he knew you. I felt it, too. He reminds me of... Um... Of who? <sighs> Jimmy. The one on the baseball? My brother. We were uh, out playing baseball on the street one day, and uh, this truck came by and uh, jackknifed. I saw it coming, and there was nothing I could do. It's a uh, hard thing to learn when you're nine years old. Uh, that people die and that it's forever. Jordy reminds you of him, huh? <laughs> you don't even look a thing like James, which something. Anyway, what'd you find out? Three people go missing every harvest. So far this year, only two have. Dave Mino and Mrs. Cobine. And the harvest only has two days to go. The scarecrow has to find another victim, and soon. If only we had something to go on. I... I... I think I can help you.
didn't see his face at all. But he was wearing a, a long black raincoat with a, with a big black hat, with a big brim. Well, we know what he's wearing. That doesn't help us find the scarecrow. One time, my dad and me, we went to Mr. Cobain's. It was your barn, so I snuck into the barn. There, there was something hanging. I didn't get a good look at it, but it was a scarecrow. You got the flashlight? It should be in the car. It sure looks good on you, Tiger. Now, once you show us how to get in, I want you to duck out of sight until we give you the all clear, okay? Okay. All right. Oh, no. What? My license is missing. When was the last time you saw it? I don't know. Yesterday? I... The picture was on it. My dad, he lost a picture a couple days before. Mrs. Kobe, her picture was pinned to the shirt of that. That must be how the scarecrow finds its victims. Vicky, we've got to get you someplace safe. Um, the sheriff's, just in case. understand about Nick. The killer wanted the sheriff to think that Nick was a scarecrow so he wouldn't dig any deeper. He's not going to stir things up by having it go for you at the sheriff's. Jordy, come on. Sheriff! We hoped you'd be here. Well, I just got here. Kind of late for you three to be out, ain't it? Uh, well, something came up. I've got to run an errand. Do you think it'd be okay if I stayed here? I mean, in view of everything that's happened. I just don't want to. Yeah, sure. I understand. Why don't you just scurry on back to your hole? You killed my wife. And my boy, too. You brought him here and you dressed him up. You had to come over to Mino's place. He would have never done anything like that on his own. Well, it stops here, Marge. It stops right here. Well, listen to the big noise. I mean it, by God! Poor Charlie. Don't get so head up. Marty, you are a good looking lady. You. You keep away. Charlie, I swear to you, I never meant to hurt you or yours. I never did. Lord, I brung that tea for Nick. All the time when he was feeling so bad. And I paid you good when you was going to sell cheap. Didn't I? Didn't I always make sure you got in a good crop? Every year. Didn't I? Well, then, come on. Friday's curse will continue in a moment here on A&E. Do you know which types of mutual funds are performing best right now? Get the answers when you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Call now and you'll also get a free guide to understanding money and investing. 
It focuses on the risks and the rewards of investments. Get your guide free when you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Get 10 weeks of the journal for just $36 and the guide free with your paid subscription. Call toll-free 800-544-7100. That's 800-544-7100. Time is running out for these children. Their cancers won't wait for a cure. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, the race to find a cure depends on you. I come to St. Jude because I have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I have leukemia. Time may be running out, but it's not too late. And any contribution you can make, no matter how small, will help kill the cancer that's killing these children. Sometimes I scream because it hurts. It hurts. Your gift will provide research, treatment, and hope. At St. Jude, no family pays for their child's treatment. That's why whatever help you can give is so important. Please call now with your tax-deductible gift. If you like, you can even charge your gift. If I had one wish, it would be that there was a cure for cancer. Please call and help us right now. There isn't a second to lose. Screening Room will return after these messages. To some, David Koresh was a messiah. They believe that he is a channel from God to the world. To others, a manipulative liar. He lived like a king. To the government, he was an armed and dangerous fugitive who held off their siege. He says God told him to wait. Until the fiery apocalypse that ended in death. All of a sudden, it was, it was like there was just heat and flames all around us. And left questions about the government's deadly force. The buck stops with me. Attack at Waco on American Justice. Next Wednesday on A&E. The war that's fought on the streets. I have a war for your arrest. Don't move. And in the courts. I ask you to weigh all the evidence that is presented. We fight that war every day. When it comes to the law, everybody's the same. There's a fine line between right and wrong. He says you threatened to kill him. It's a thin blue line. You go to jail. You don't get out. Law and order. Beginning this fall on a &E. It would be criminal to miss it. And now, the conclusion of Friday's Curse. Don't look at it, George. It's getting late. Yeah. I mean, late in the year. Harvest is almost in. People around here don't talk a whole lot, do they? Not unless they got something to say. Well. That would make it kind of easy to keep a secret. I mean, if people don't say anything. That is assuming that people do have secrets. Oh, I got lots of secrets. Are you cold? Yeah, a bit. I'll get you a blanket. Well, 10 years 
somewhere. He was wearing a long black raincoat. that thing? Huh? Some kind of contract. It was sale. The farm. Charlie sold the farm more than three years ago. To who? Oh, no. Come on. What is it? Come on! What? God. You just look like you walked on your own grave. No, no, I'm okay. In fact, I'm fine. You haven't seen Ryan, have you? No, honey. No, I It's just us girls. Marge, I really appreciate what you're doing. Yes, yes. You just relax. That's something you city folks never seem to learn. You just lay back. I'll take care of everything. Marge! You locked the door!
Hey, you gotta keep warm. Come on. Look, there's nothing to worry about, okay? Tiger, got something for you. That's what my dad used to call me. Yeah? That's well, just an old, old baseball. Thanks, Ryan. Who's Jimmy? Jimmy? Well, when I was a kid, what you were. Well, that about wraps her up. You know, there's one thing still nagging at me. What's that? That scarecrow. After it killed all those people, what did it do with the heads? the highest paid photographers in the world. Let's explore the life of Vanity Fair's Annie Leibovitz on an all-new biography tonight. Now, it's the power and the glory, next on A&E.